free throw line. Good take by Lamar. I love this take from Lamar Patterson. You see there when the ball got passed back to him, stepped into a three ball, but realised Kai Soto was the one who was coming across. So he put the ball on the floor and his patience, his ability to, to get in there and somehow get a shot off through contact. He's one of the best in the league at that, at getting the contact and trying to stay balanced. It's a great job using his body. That's what I got told. But it's starting on the defensive end. They started off slow in this first quarter. They picked it up thanks to their bench coming off this really good energy and effort on defense. Marshall, Soto, McCarron. Oh! From Super Soto. Car Soto. Well, that was, that was a shot from Mitch McCarron, but Soto read that, read that perfectly. Put a lid on it. Look at the guys playing with confidence. The young fella. He's enjoying himself out there. Goodness! Opportunity is on a platter right now for him. He's making the best of it. Well, that's just too easy. Good finish by DJ. He'll take that. Soto. 218 centimeters, Kai Soto, second tallest player in the NBL behind Chuan Chin Lu, who we'll see out there at some stage. Patterson, four left on the shot clock, had to put it up from long range and dropped it. Oh, yeah. Look, I know when he's leading and scoring, they lose. But we need an aggressive Lamar Patterson. Look at this. Oh, that is a shot from Mitch McCarron, and just the awareness to know that's going to airball. And just go straight up with it. The length, yeah. <laughs> this isn't. Yep. Ready? Here we go. He is enjoying himself. I love well, the fact that he he recognizes opportunity and taking full advantage of it. Very unfortunate. Big fellas out for the season. Isaac Humphrey. However, next man up mentality. And that's Kai Soto. They could tie it up here, Brisbane. They were down by double figures. Lamar. Stalking it. Oh. And it's been over with. Spoke about Lamar Patterson, Corey, the stat about he leads the score and they lose. What I love so far in this quarter from James Duncan, he's the one forward. He's feeling good, Lamar Patterson. He's going to take those, he's going to make those. But I love that he held everybody accountable. Yes, Lamar Patterson, the first three, but had two, two poor possessions on defense to open the game. And James Duncan said, you're sitting down. I'm making sure that we are all locked in and what we have to do. And now he's come back out and responded. Just want to waste this one. Feeds it in. Besto off the glass. Oh, man. Gets the rattle. Just, just good offense and great creativity off the dribble. Besto straight, straight, straight up. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Patterson backs it back out. For D. Patterson for three. And why not? We got to change that stack today. For them to win, he got to get off. <laughs> Period. Well, he does. I mean, the other superstar we know that in Sobe is Robert Franks. He's played four minutes. He's got donuts across the board. So, Lamar Patterson's going to have to lead. It's Cam Besto. Again, just trying to get to that sweet back spot. He's getting him up. <laughs> and DJ behind his back. The about four goes at it before Hiram Harris finally cleaned it up. Well, that's going to be on the video review. Those are the things they're trying to really clean up is Mark Patterson. He's 13 first quarter points. He's only missed one shot. Here he is again. Got defeated to Tyrell McCarron. Little tip, Harris, and that's got to do it. No awareness that that was going to be the end. Couldn't get a shot at in time. Great opening term, a game that both teams desperately need to win. Bullets are double figures down. They're only down by four with three quarters to play. 25 plays 21.
Brisbane. The Adelaide Sixers lead by 4, 25 to 21 after a hot start by the away team. Great to have your company wherever you're watching around the land. Great to have Kmart fan cam as well. Again, this season tonight's winner of the $50 Kmart gift card. Mel George, it's our sixth season as 36ers members. Attend every game and love the atmosphere and spending time together. And it is great family fun. Get to an NBL game and see what we're talking about if you haven't been to one lately. Well, good start from the 36ers. That's Mark Patterson's best first quarter start in his career. He's the only bullet starter to score. 13 points for Patterson. Look at all the other scorers from out like 36ers. Everybody else... Robert Franks only played the four minutes. Jack Salt, he started, just played around four minutes. Tanner Krebs, they were all double figure, plus minus. That's why they sat down. Patterson again. As well as Patterson is playing, right now, this is where they need to establish Robert Franks in the post. That possession right there, they had withers on him. Give him the ball in the post and let him go. Fade away two from Bairstow. Hit check from him. Kadeen. Hesitation step. Didn't quite work. Withers was with him. Franks, there you go. Corey Homicide Williams caught for it. Pocket pick. He got it back. He lost it. He got it back. And then he lost it again. Detch down the floor quickly to DJ. Couldn't drop it. A little nudge. Or did do a little bit of nudging on the way through. 25-21 like still. I like the intent. Gave it to Franks. Good hands by Getch. But I'd go back to Franks again. They have to establish interior play. They cannot just rely on the jump shot. They're going to need more than one of their superstars in Mark Patterson. Carrying the scoring. Jimmy and Moss have both hit a three. Harrison's got two points. Mark Patterson's a salt man right now. Need Robert Franks to have a good game. He keeps turning it over. It's not a good start in this second quarter. Sunday Detch drew a crowd. Mitch McCarran looks for Daniel Johnson. Back down Franks and then tough fadeaway too. Franks pulls it down. Patterson. Both teams still scoreless in this second so far. Lamar, he's been the man, but not that time. And still, neither team scored in this quarter. Sunday Detch. Bester. Withers. Single figure shot clock for Sunday. He lost it, got it back. You have to put it out. They do. And whose ball is it? Still a chance for the 36ers. Have a look at this possession now. Robert Franks has the height mismatch. And you're not going to get the ball trying to post up there over all the hands. And in the end, they just settle for a deep contested three from Lamar Patterson. If he wants it, he's got to point to Tanner Krebs saying, get the ball back on the wing. And he's got to fight over to the closest block and establish himself. When Jason Kenny had the ball... NBA range at the top of the key. He's not going to try and throw it down there if you're really not in a stance, really trying to seal up. That doesn't show you what the ball on that mismatch. It's explained by Peter Hurley and Ted Dufelmeyer out there at the moment. Trying to add some valuable minutes. Robert Franks. Starting to get a feel for it. Salt. Trimming. Patterson takes it himself, draws the foul. He's disappointed with himself for not being able to finish or go to the line. See that nice take right there. He established it. He wanted the ball. You're absolutely right, Peter Hooley. He's assertive with that position. I got a mismatch. Give me the ball, and I'm going to go to work. Dufour did a good job of pushing him off the block, but you can see straight away, Mark Patterson wanted it there. He has so much success down on the block that he was saying, get the ball to the wing. I'm in my stance. I'm using my physicality to hold Dufour off. Just throw it to me, and I'll make a play. Peter, I wonder sometimes if the Bullets are better off posting Patterson more often than 
Franks. Frank sometimes looks comfortable more in the, you know, just in the mid-range area playing face-up basketball instead of maybe with his back to the basket. I, I need to see him play more to really make a good observation on that. But we know Patterson can play all over the floor, and he's very good in the post up. He's very good in the post game, and I think that's something they can do, especially with big lose in the game now. But when they go Patterson the four, Franks at the five, you can have Patterson down low, and if they try and front it, Franks can be the high post flash, and then he can throw across the top of Soto. It's a nice little mid-range jumper over Big Lou, but I think that's something they need to be able to work out, because you're right, Rocky. Uh, Franks down low, he has had some success. I think Lamar Patterson, he's a really tough matchup down there. Two tallest players in the NBL going head-to-head -head out there at the moment at the reverse. Juan Ching Lu mopped it up, couldn't finish, but will go to the free throw line. So Juan Ching Lu, tallest NBL player of all time. If you haven't been watching so far this season, the Chinese superstar, seven foot five, two and a quarter meters tall. And at the moment, Kai Soto has been turning it on 218 centimeters, the second tallest player in the NBL. Soto there not trying to go with the traditional box out because probably doesn't have to against a lot of the other teams in opposition. Just put your hands up and grab the rebound. But against Big Lou, probably the one guy who might have to do a bit of early work. Try and get him out there. Out of the keyway. Just the rebound. And a couple of skip steps. They get it back to the bullets. The hesitation here. So it's still going to be a bullet's ball. Isaiah Moss could have put the shot up, but he elected not to. No, no, I'm out. We get it. Just can't react like that. Timeout's been called. Slowly clawing their way back, the bullets. They're going to sneak in on their coach, James Duncan. Yes, good call. So, on balls with Big Lou, volume one. Volume one. Side or mid. All right? Um, next play here, we go wide. Okay? Wide. So, if you're not in transition, which is just picks, right? Kick, kick. Send this call wide. You got it here. Okay? Doesn't matter. Get this, and then we're on the rim. Robo, if you're the one who's setting it, maybe we can get a wide cap for you. All right? A wide cap. All right? So we're just taking those two plays. Picks or wide, wide cap. That's it. Hey, get on the glass. Come on. Fantastic initiative announced today by the Hungry Jacks NBL. An indigenous round kicks off from March 4 across rounds 14 and 15 of the season. The annual Indigenous round celebrating, recognising and acknowledging Indigenous culture across Australia and New Zealand. Each NBL club will celebrate the round by wearing a special jersey designed by a local Indigenous artist that tells a story about Indigenous culture in each region. Great initiative announced today by the Hungry Jacks. NBL. Can't wait for that. One of my favourite rounds of the year. And when they do start to, to come out, we see the jerseys. Make sure everybody does the research to find out what the story are. The stories are incredible behind every single one. They all look outstanding every single year. Can't wait to see it on show. Murray Witness tried to take it to the hole. Born in Torres Strait Islands. Soto, Chuan Ching Lu, head to head. And you can call it head to head. They didn't see eye to eye that one, but they did actually see eye to eye, which is rare for Juan Ching Lu. Good defense holding this round one on one. Kai Soto loses it. Witness dives on the floor, showing a bit of desperation. Soto just ran into a seven foot five brick wall. Yes. Big Lou was not going anywhere. There is Kamari Witness. Torres Strait Islands getting some important minutes here. Carrying it down the floor, nearly lost it. Tad Dufelmeyer in his grill. Franks, his pocket picked by Sunday Detch. He had his pocket picked by Anthony Drimmick. Defense by Detch. 
Twice. Robert Franks tried to post him up and was unsuccessful. Holding his ground. And foul call on the witness. Overzealous with the reach. Push it back. These two teams combined have only won one of their last eight games. The loser will lose touch with the top four. Huge game this one. Chocolate winding down and lost by Ty Soto. Hard to get around Big Lou in that paint. Mm. That's the defense James Duncan was talking about with the way they're going to play the ball screens. They called it volume one for Big Lou because you can't play on a ball screen the same way that Harrison's going to be out there with Jack Salt because Lou's a different kind of player. And if you can protect him in some way when he's away from the basket, he'll have some success with his size. And he also had to try and dribble it around that big size 24 shoe that he's suiting up with. Lost again. Another turnover. Withers hands it up to Duflamite. 36ers can enter their lead. Duflamite stepped it in. Ran into that brick wall we talked about in trouble. Don't even go in the paint when Big Lou's there. Nothing's happening. You're 0 for 3 trying to score in that paint with that big fella in there. And good job on defense by Brisbane. However, on offense, they have 10 turnovers. They're lucky to be down three points with those that, that many turnovers. With four and a half. Well, Adelaide's been turning the ball over this quarter, too. This quarter's just it's three to two scoring in this quarter. Because there's been turnovers, there's been a couple of missed shots, and other shots have been hard to come by. It's going to be an easy, yeah. easy bucket there. <laughs> Nothing easy about that. <laughs> Doesn't matter how, just matters how many. And he's got another couple. Juan Ching Lu, amongst the crowd's delight. Bear Stone. Trying to light it up. Hands it up. Mitch McCarran can't nail that. Franks the rebound. And the Bullets can take the lead. That's why Adelaide tried to counter the way with Big Lou. He's sending it guard to big screen to see what they did. And they switched it and got a bit confused. Big Lou didn't know, should I go out to Mitch McCarran on the three? And Mitch McCarran knocks that down. That's the perfect way to try and go at the defense they're playing with Lou out there. Robert Franks just had Mitch McCarron on him where they switched the D and he did not even try to establish himself in the post. He needs to be more assertive and recognize these mismatches and take advantage of them. No doubt, he has to. They've also got to recognize that he's taken one shot this entire half so far. He's This man started the season, he's shown that he can be a superstar. I think Lou was trying to force that to him. But again, on the, on the flip side, he's got to want it. He's had those mismatches, and you've got to get to your spot. You don't just have to say, okay, I'm here, you're going to throw me the ball. Work hard to say, I'm in this spot, throw me the ball, I'll make some good things happen. Listen to the applause for Juan Ching Lu. The Chinese superstar absolutely love, and guess what? The Bullets have the lead after being down by double figures in the opening quarter. They were late to this party, but they're dancing now. Mitch McCarran dances to the bucket himself to restore some order. Great take by the crafty vet. Even better finish. Straight line to the basket. They foul him. Too deep in the paint, and he does exactly what he needed to do, finish. One bonus, guys. Heads to the line, the ex-Melbourne United Championship winner. Still trying to find that balance of when he wants to be assertive on the offensive end in terms of looking for his own shot and getting everybody else involved. And games like this with no dust behind it. Yeah, Cam Best, though, has been outstanding. Daniel Johnson has got going, but who else is going to be that guy that looks like a dangerous threat at all times? Oh, Franks. He got away with the travel, but he to make the play. Good look. Trimming. Awesome. Back to the corner. Trimming stepped it in. Fade away, two. Tough shot. 
Yeah. Look at James Duncan. He's about to. He's oh, not happy at all. He's getting subbed out because he's saying that you get the offensive rebound. There's about six seconds left on the shot clock. You got to look for something better than a fadeaway too. Besto denied initially Daniel by Jason. Harrison, but DJ just took it again. Just took it over Robert Franks. Harrison is down, and there we go. This is going to be a substitution straight away. James Duncan was not having it on that shot attempt from Anthony Drink. Looks like he's got an ankle issue, but Derek Rucker a little closer than us. Uh, welcome back to you, Derek. Yeah, that happened right in front of me, Dwayne. He went up to get that ball before it got to the basket, and boom, right there on the foot and guys as we know these are brutal and no matter what it always feels like it's broken the first time obviously rarely is that the case with Tyrell Harrison another unlucky moment every time he finds form and starts to show promise it seems like he unfortunately gets a breakdown and we're witnessing it again right now at a real inopportune moment yeah, that's a stinger. As you said, most the way he rolls that, standing on someone's foot, that's never nice. And the majority, if not all, players will be taped or braced. So those just hurt. And there's nothing big damage-wise. It's going to be one of those ones that you get a bit extra strapping done nice and tight and a couple of painkillers and try and get back out there. Lamar takes it in off the glass. Beautiful to watch. 17 points in 11 minutes. On five of nine shooting. Finished to the up flake. Back to McCarron. Being a little more aggressive, but the look away didn't work. He probably should have looked. Good day. Over the top to Franks. Starting to load it up for you, Corey. Finally. They not only find him, he takes advantage of the mismatch and finish. We well, just pointed at exactly where the pass had to go and trying to look. Yeah, it's not me, so. This is what the other thing he tried to do last time. Feed the ball to Aaron Harris down low, trying to get him to go to work. Wow. Hold on. But were they too good early to challenge? Well, the possession before, they were still trying to feed him. And no one else was getting open or doing anything. And Ended up getting a turnover out of it. So I think Brisbane Bullets were thinking, hey, if you're going to throw it down to Harris on Patterson, we're going to live with that. We're going to live with it. So it looks like they will challenge. It's an early challenge, but they all looked at each other as if to say, yeah, we're all on the same page here. Let's challenge it, despite the fact it's still the first half. You win your challenge, you keep your challenge. Well, I mean, it's Lamar Patterson's second foul, and he's the only one really doing anything on the offensive end, so they really are feeling pretty strongly about it. And then try and save him a potential foul could be crucial. Replay center seeing what you're seeing at home. And oh, I'm not sure. Man, that ain't no foul, man. But you see, he, he moves forward just that ever. So right here, see, he just jumps forward. And jumps into Lamar. That's not a foul. I'm Lamar is straight up. Listen to Lamar hands. No, but he moves. So you can see where Harrison moves. Uh, Lamar Patterson's feet go a little bit, a little jump forward. And he, Harris definitely makes the contact right there. Oh, I think he's going to lose this because he leaves the cylinder. Again, I, I didn't think it was a foul in fast speed, but just that little bit, you see where he takes off from Lamar Patterson, that is, where he lands, was just at the time that Harris we tried to get We need a tiebreaker. It's one all here. Derek, can you break the tie between these two? You know I can break the tie. Peter Hawley, a PhD at the Andrew Gay School, uh, taking a tie. Hey, look here, Hawley. Not a chance. That's no foul. You're not calling that. But wait a minute. Corey. Corey. Bulls grew up in the in the era where they probably uh, called just challenges on like this and unsportsmanlike like fouls in pickup. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> in the meantime, um, Peter Hawley justified, even though he loses in the commentary box two to one. So what they're saying, they're saying it's not, it shouldn't be a foul. And, and at fast speed, it didn't look like it. I, I'll agree with both Rux and that's Corey fine. there. Fine. But you break it down. Down, and that's what the whole problem with the challenge is because you break it down to the camera angles and you've got this to be able to really slow it down. Mark Patterson shuffles forward with a little hop right as Harris hits him. So he's leaving his cylinder and it's deemed illegal. So if that's not cool, I'm completely happy that it's the right thing to do. But it was cool and it's going to be hard to overturn. Final sound that Corey Harris. 
hadn't played enough games to get a call against a veteran like that. I'm just talking about the challenge. I don't think it was the way it was initially called, but then James Duncan hasn't been one of the best in the business in terms of coaches' challenges. And I'll tell you what, no, getting, getting all that data through it. Chase Buford up until last night, I think he's still well in the lead. He is, has a phenomenal strike rate in the coaches' challenges. So you think the Stars should have a little bit of waiting in their favour? 100%. <laughs> Thank you. OK, 1.25 left. Kiddi with the feed. And Franks. There we go. Being a little more aggressive as Corey Homicide Williams demanded. He's too good of a player to not get looks and get touches. Robert Franks, two points, one of two in 12 minutes. Should have had at least 10 attempts in this first half. Still got a second half coming for you. Robert Franks, seven NBA games for Orlando. Another of the former NBA players in the NBL. And it's all tied up. 34 apiece with a half and change to come. Mitch McCarron. Bearstock. Sunday Detch. 36 is back in front. Sunday Detch just gets on the scoreboard. It was 0 3 before that. A little back and forth. Scoring's opened up a little bit in the last few minutes after really struggling to find any buckets. It's Krebs takes them all. Oh, he does just slowly. Kept dribbling all the way around in a circle. Got past Daniel Johnson for the easy layup in the end. McCarron to Ditch. Kadini's grill. Double team. Daniel Johnson long range two. And it looks like it's going to be the Ports ball. 32 seconds left. Although there's claim here from Harris that it's the 36ers who should have it. That's He's right. going to have a sit down. Lamar Patterson to have a sit down. That's all right. Good effort in minutes by Harris coming off the bench. Still 36ers with it. It's just Sunday Ditch. Big rebound. DJ. Oh, tough bucket. Impossible circus shot from Daniel Johnson. Daniel Johnson just knew the foul was coming, the whistle was coming, and just threw it, threw it at the hoop. <laughs> he had no idea where he was or what he was doing. That's a veteran play. Sometimes better be lucky than good. And Franks was just hoping that it didn't fall there exactly the way it did. And those are those are never nice when you're Robert Franks thinking you've got haven't got the complete position. You're just hoping that that ball either goes in or short and gets away from you because Daniel Johnson, seven footer, was always going to come up with that if it bounces over the rim like it did. Adelaide doing a fantastic job in the first half on the offensive boards. seconds the differential between the shot clock and the game clock to end the half. Bullets holding it for what might end up being the last shot. Kadee doesn't want to waste it. Takes on Bairstow and who's ball? 36ers will have 5.7 left to use it. James Duncan, you know, Jason Kadee to go by the mismatch. Big fella Cam Bairstow, but Todd Withers did that perfectly. Just put his body in the help spot. Not steal. Sunday. The tip that rattles out. Half time. Nissan Arena in Brisbane under the Friday night lights. And this one is living up to the expectation. 38 36. Two point margin at half time in favour of the 36ers after the margin was four points at quarter time in a game that both teams desperately need to win. Let's head down to Derek Rucker. Lamar, good first half from yourself, 17 points. You guys have really tightened up the defense. You restricted them to only 13 points in that quarter. Hard work, hard work uh, this week paid off. Uh, yeah, um, but still not happy with it. Again, too many offensive rebounds, so I think that's that's the name of the game right now for us. We just got, they're, out, they're being more physical than us, so we got to get physical down there and get some of those rebounds. You're carrying the team offensively. You're feeling confident, operating all over the floor. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's just... 
just a fan in this league. Uh, I know what it has to say. We got, we got Sobe out, so um, but we, we got a lot of guys who can get going. So uh, second half is going to be somebody else, and I'm just going to be there to fill in. All right, Lamar, good first half. Enjoy the half, man. See you in second half. 36 is by two. Corey Homicide, Williams, Peter Hooley, and Derek Rucker. Just kick it all apart after the break. Runs where they've been dropping, and some of their stars really shining under the Friday night lights. They are. Adelaide 36 has got off to a flyer. James Duncan called a couple of timeouts, made some big substitutions, and got them back in it. And the second quarter wasn't pretty. Just back and forth action. It was slow to get going, and then in the end, both teams had a crack. And Marpaz is having a good game. Daniel Johnson, Cam Besto, picking the defense apart. But ultimately, I mean, sports are down too, but I think they'll be happy with the way they fought in that second quarter. Big 20 minutes coming up for both these teams. Lamar Patterson's been the big star. 17 points to half time. Lamar, Daniel Johnson, 10 points, and Cam Bairstow, 10 points for the Adelaide 36ers, who are coming off their best win of the season, but also coming off a long COVID break. They didn't play a game last round. There's the numbers broken down. Yeah, they are, though. Guys came to play. Cam Bairstow set the tone. DJ showed up in the second quarter. Lamar Patterson had been leading the charge for the Brisbane Bullets. Drimmick picked up his energy at both ends of the court in the second half. My thing is you can see the numbers right there. Here's my thing. 
Adelaide 36ers have nine offensive rebounds. Brisbane have 11 turnovers. Okay? And they are down two points with Robert Franks, one of two. They are lucky to be down just two points. They really are. Fun to see you when you get a little restless. <laughs> Man. You're restless all the time. Derek Rucker, how have you seen it so far? Well, I mean, that second quarter was not pretty at all, guys. And in fact, Corey, down here with the courtside stats, Adelaide actually have 12 offensive rebounds and Brisbane have the 11 turnovers. So you guys are 100% correct. The fact that Brisbane are only down two points is insane. Now, I, I think if they can figure out that turnover problem, continue to get good shots. And look, Robert Franks has to find his spot on the court. I don't know how they do that. This up and down from him is somewhat concerning. But I really think if the Bullets can fix the turnovers up, keep Adelaide off the offensive glass, this is their game to win in the second half. Well, D. Rock, Lamar Patterson outstanding, got the 17 points. You spoke to him at halftime. The stats have shown when he does lead the team in scoring, they lose. But we know this is an MVP caliber player in the past yeah. four seasons. So what do they need to see from him night in and night out to be successful? I think he just has to go for it on every night. And as Corey said, it's got to change tonight. That, that trend, that streak is not going to continue if he's the type of basketball player we know he is. He has played here in Brisbane on a good team and been highly productive. He's been an MVP candidate. We know he can do it. He's just got to drag and will his teammates to be better and raise up to his level of performance. D-Rock. Yeah. Franks, one of two. Yeah. Brisbane have to do a better job finding him and getting him in positions where... He can get busy. As we can see right now, Lamar Patterson, you see the shot charred by Soda Stream. Lamar is doing his thing. Yep. He cannot continue to, to lead from the front alone. This league is too tough for one player to, to, to win games. But, Corey, it's really hard. You look at those 11 possessions uh, where they turn the ball over. 11, 11 turnovers in a game is just passing, you know, a, a standard that you like to set for your team. So 11 in two quarters, that's a lot of possessions where you don't get quality touches for one of your Main guys, that's got to be fixed up, and that's the responsibility of the whole team. This turnover problem, it's not Jason Kadi that has seven. It's not Lou that has five. It's right throughout the team, and they've got to fix that up collectively as a unit. And what do you want to see on the half-court offense? Because Robert Franks is the stud, but the, the role cut, the role plays, the supporting cast, the, the Kadees, the Drimmicks, the Mosses, they're going to be knocking down these shots to take the pressure off a guy like Robert Franks. Well, I thought one time when he got the ball out on the perimeter against Sunday Desh, that's not the time where he should be trying to go off the bounce facing up, okay? He's got to pick and choose when he utilizes his skill set. Now, if he has Desh down on the block, that's where he wants to go to work, all right? If if he gets a bigger guy, a DJ on him, drag him out to the three-point line or play in the mid-post area where you can use your quickness, your jabbing into your jumper. But, you know, you've got to be intelligent as a strong offensive player and pick and choose your times to use your weapons. Thanks, Derek. Love your work, boys. Second half coming up, so settle back. This one looks like going down to the wire. By the way, you can play like a pro as well, thanks to Bunnings Warehouse, so we're giving you the chance to win your very own court.
for some Friday night boots at Bisson Arena in Brisbane. This is the 90th meeting between these two teams on their 40th anniversary of their first ever meeting. All time, they've met 89 times. Brisbane, 39. Adelaide, 50. Well, it's winning that first ever meeting between these two, 79, 74, 40 years ago. Put crowd in for this Friday night contest. And so far, so good. Both teams have had their runs. It's a two-point game to start the second half. Kadeem. Seesawing second quarter where both teams shared the lead. Into Franks. Tipped away. Gets it back. Withers tried to worry him out of it and did. Well, there's no doubt about it. At halftime, they would have spoken about getting Robert Franks some touches. Try and run a play. That was never on. Yeah, it's well defended by Adelaide 36ers because, yes, the Bullets would have been speaking. Let's get a play for Robert Franks. Adelaide 36ers, CJ Bruton would have said, they're thinking this. They're going to talk about getting Franks involved. Let's make sure we're switched on. First play out. And they were. The feed to Daniel Johnson didn't work, so... Instant turnover from the 36ers this time. Kadeem sends it in. Spin move in the spin cycle was delightful from Patterson. Love to see Lamont Patterson in this type of mode. 19 points. And he's not done yet. Sunday, high off the glass, gets it to rattle home. That was a well-contested layup. Good left hand finish off the glass by Getch. That's a play the LA 36ers run a lot. You see the little cross screen of the star for Daniel Johnson. Sometimes they throw it into him and they get that up screen for Sunday Detch down the middle around the free throw line. And other times they get that curl from Sunday Detch. It's a good little thing to throw it and see which way they want to defend it. Daniel Johnson just good body movement from Salt. I think Daniel Johnson basically collapsed. Look, like Jack, beach, yeah. Jack Salt. See, watch here. Is a big, strong right unit. Right there. And Daniel Johnson right there collapsed as his hands come down. He's saying it's a bit of an offensive foul, but you're right, boy. He's, he's a strong, strong kid. He plays physical. He's in the book at 117 kilo. 208 centimetres worth the London-born Kiwi. Talk about the... The stats at halftime, offensive rebounds for Adelaide, the turnovers from the Bullets. But Adelaide, only team this season to have no made threes at halftime. They're old four. No Dusty Hannes is going to take that out. Sunday Detch is old three. Mitch McCarron's put up one. The guys we often see top with us, shooting 41%. Hasn't caught up. Daniel Johnson yet to shoot a three ball. There you go. With us on cue. Big rebound to pull down. Salt. Had a roll to him. Robert Franks. Salt. Patterson gets the screen. Three point attempt. Drops it all net. You know what? We're not going to wait on Franks. We're just going to continue to play through the hot hand of Lamar Patterson. 22 points on seven. Of 11. And the jam from Withers straight back at you. The way they defended that ball screen with Lamar Patterson, he's in attack mode right now. Daniel Johnson was playing, playing hey, off a little bit. Like he can't job. shoot. And he's going to make you pay. Franks. Franks. You ask, you get Corey. Well, they had Kim Besto guarding him out there, the possession before, but he brought the ball up, and it would have been a no-pass shot if he tried to attack Cam Besto. So that's a little bit more of a ball movement, player movement. He can create his own shot, and he comes to steal. Bullets are off and running. Oh, Sunday Detch got into the grill of Tanner Krebs, who it looked like he was going to just stroll to the bucket. Oh, this was... This is the kind of crap. This is how you don't try to play for the foul and come across Sunday. Why well, wouldn't you just go up with the left hand? You had the whole left side. Well, if you miss, Robert Franks is an offensive rebounding position. This is more confusing down the other end. Robert Franks finally hits a three ball and he's come straight out of the ball game. He's sitting down. So if you're CJ Bruton, you're thinking, how do I stop Robert Franks now? He's hot. Oh, no, I don't have to. I've just taken him from the court. To D and they've lost it. There he is, having a sit down. So no Nathan Sobey and no 
Dusty Hannes. So kind of balances out with a couple of stars. No Mojave King or Isaac Humphreys either for the 36ers. That's got the three fouls, but really it's not to be worried about that if you get three fouls in the first half. Duncan just trying to make sure that you stay safe. Good hustle there. Getting on the floor. Oh, himself as well as others. The crowd loving this is Daniel Johnson. His hack under the bucket. That's just a fantastic play. Great hustle by Jason Kadeem. Lamar Patterson sees the teammates trailing and throws it up. Dang, dang, knows exactly what to do with it. Brisbane on five. I'm not sure. I think Lamar Patterson, when he first looked over, saw Anthony Dribbinger was just throwing it to me, and then Dang Dang came straight down the middle. So I'll take that. He just saw a bunch of blue jerseys just said, I'll throw it up somewhere. Somebody will finish it. Someone will either put a lid on it or board tap it. And James Duncan was not happy at all, calling three seconds. He had, he had a very good case. But Johnson has been uncharacteristically poor by his standards from the free throw line this season. You're giving him no burgers, though. Not this time. He's very rare when it comes to giving anyone burgers, Daniel Johnson. As Peter already told you, normally a lot better than one of two. 47-43, some pressure on the 36ers. Withers comes up with it. Hands to McCarran. He got to get a bit more aggressive. Thought about taking it himself. And the offensive foul caught against him. It's a good step up by Deng Deng. And this is the Mitch McCarron mindset of he was always looking to pass that ball. If he's got his mind on, yes, he's got Anthony Drink beat. If he's looking at trying to get that little floater off, he will see Deng Deng coming. He was trying to make a play for somebody else. And in the end, got the offensive foul. It's his third for the game. A big stretch right here for the Bullets. They've taken Jason Kadi off, and they don't have anyone that looks like a true point guard out there. Patterson's going to run the point. Let's see how this next phase goes. A little bit of rolling the dice. Yeah, nice call, Derek. We'll keep an eye on that as Patterson with a perky, jerky step gave it up. Trimmick couldn't nail it. Nice in and out. Good shot by Trimmick. It's a good offensive percentage play just missed it. Besto finds the hole again. He was hot early, a little cool, but he's having an outstanding year. I actually don't mind Lamar Patterson playing the point, as long as it's not the whole game, because you don't want him to have to try and make every single play stuck in the point guard position, giving it up like that and not seeing it again. But in certain parts of the game, when you do bring out Jason today, he makes a great passing, he can be aggressive. Karen, he drew a crowd. Still there for the rebound. Salt. Ding, ding. Trimmick. Salt. Patterson. Isaiah Moss. Lamar almost had his pocket pick. Feeds it up. Outstanding to Anthony Trimmick. The like finish was cute. I like the fact that the ball went through hands. Found its way back to him. The man that can create plays for others like you just saw. Good finish. Brisbane. That's that balance I was talking about. If he's going to play the point, it can't be the whole game because a lot of the time as the point guard, if you bring it up and pass it, you might not see it again. But he's going to have to try and create things. But if you hit the ball back to him, look, he makes kind of something out of nothing. Jimmy makes a cut off him. After the, there's been some ball and player movement, Mark Patterson having himself some sort of night. 22 points, 7-11 from the field. A couple of assists, a couple of rebounds. A couple of steals as well. Let's not forget no Nathan Selby, so he has to carry this load. So far, so good in this one. From the beginning. A lot of aggression. Gets the two, will go to the line and gives the fan a little up close and personal. Nice but it's take. okay, and so is the female fan, thankfully. Nice take. Soto dive, so Harrison couldn't commit. Had him in no man's land. Mitch McCarran takes full advantage of that. Lays it up and goes for the charity strike for three to Hardwick. Back to within one. Wigness. 
Ding, ding. See, Ruck thought this is the big period before when Kadee came out. This is a bigger period now. No Franks, no Patterson. Ding, ding got his arm caught under Soto there. And... Yeah, it like it hurt. That's not too bad. New straight away. Straight to the rooms. Oh, man. He's had a good little period. We know he had that dunk, but he's put his body on the line, took the charge. And he's, I think, real good defense out there, too. You know, I think James Duncan just realizing they don't really have we that veteran the person they put the ball in the hands to play. They brought Samuel in for Deng Deng, and then it's really brought Jason Kinney off the bench. So at least you got the veteran guard out there to try and set things up because there's no Franks, no Patterson in a big period four, minutes, four and a half minutes to go in this third quarter Here we go. Johnson with the inbound he's on that ditch the second he was trying to zig when he thought he was going to zag McCarran And I don't mind that foul because defensively they're aggressive, they're up the lanes, they're denying. Take that. That's kind of the ones that James Duncan was looking for early in the game to kind of set the tone, to trying to have your hands active, trying to have that energy there. But that one, next one, I'll get too many of those. Daniel Johnson. For Samuel for company. Likes his chances. Takes him on. And on the buzzer. Draws the foul. Wow. That's a veteran move. Had a mismatch. The crafty gets. I was in one the way going up. I was never going to end well for Samuel. But <laughs> Daniel Johnson just so good at being aware, as you said, Corey, the veteran move. This is the one season where he's actually averaging more threes attempted than free throws. And this is a guy who can, this is a free throw line a lot over his career. So savvy when the way he goes about it. We saw it right there. The shot clock winding down, just the ability to get fouled, throw something at the rim. One of two last time at the line. Twelfth season at the 36ers. More points and more rebounds than any other active NBL player. He has been a superstar, Daniel Johnson. That's what he normally does, put two in. 36ers back in front. Four minutes left in the third. Push and shove. It's called on Ted Duthermeyer. Hey, Sunday! 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 Knowing the scouts. <laughs> He's all over it, saying to lock in here of Jason Kadee hey, potentially having a little keeper. So, let's see if Kadee tries to change that. Harrison. Moss. High off the glass. Oh, Soto with the rebound. Do for the mile. Get off. Get off. Get off. Johnson. This time with Isaiah Moss for company. Knock Samuel. Hands it up. And Emmanuel Malou with a bomb. Hadn't played all game. Be ready when opportunity comes and the ball comes your way. Nothing but net. That was a big couple of minutes. 8-0 run for the Adelaide 36ers with no Patterson, no Franks in the ball game. I'm out called. Okay, LP, I want you here. All right, catching it here. 
right? As that happens, Big Lou, you're here, all right? Chase, I want you to scream for, uh, for Isaiah. Isaiah, you're going to come off. You're going to curl. So oh, sorry, Trim. Trim, you're going to curl to the basket and then get out. As that happens, I want you two to play two-man game. Hey, everybody, so I'm coming up. I'm coming up. Yes, yes, yes. All right. 36 is back out to a four point lead. Saw Manuel Malou lamb on from long range. You think you can shoot a full court shot at an NBL game? Head to the NBL website page to enter for your chance to win $100,000 in the Macrobe Financial Sharp Shot. And if you miss your first shot, you get a second chance from half court for $50,000, thanks to the Trobe Financial. As expected, James Duck has seen enough, both Patterson and Franks, into the game with Big Lou. Patterson. Kadee. Patterson had to reach under some pressure. Shot clock out of single figures. Tried to drive, lost it. Big turnover. 36 is connected to that lead. Malou gave it back up. He was in the same spot. He landed one from a minute ago. Dufelmeyer. Real good hands by Dufelmeyer. On defense, Scott. Oh, come on. Oh, wow. Defendant finishes over Big Lou. Six point deficit. Prison. Franks. Bam. Stays hot. This is the last time he knocked one down was the step back and went when it sat down. And Roll Franks starting to have his impact in this game. Very important two minutes coming up. Can Robert Franks finish this quarter with three fouls? Johnson, Franks, didn't want to get too aggressive, and DJ missed it, and the tip was nice, cleaned up his own. DJ doing a good job understanding the defender, Franks has three attacking him, Franks can't play hard. Daniel Johnson up to 13, 15 points now, Franks again, two in a row, great awareness, and Daniel Johnson is great and successful as he's been in his career, he's points on the board. Defense ain't the call. He hasn't been known as a defensive stopper. So Robert Franks, look at the way they set up the play. First is just a little slow on that closeout. Brisbane Bullets know. Let's go back to the well. Daniel Johnson was trying to call Sunday pitch for the switch because they had Lamar Patterson setting the screen. All the miscommunication was there from Adelaide. Franks was wide open. And all of a sudden, he's in this game. He is. I'm Adelaide. I'm going right back to DJ. So put pressure on Frank. See if you can get him his fourth cloud. McCarran. It's a sort of screen. Tough fight away too, but good enough. Be Tom Brisbane looks like they're making a run. Just get, get the lead. Mitch McCarran finds a way to get a key bucket. Keep Adelaide in control of this game. Franks for three. Big Lou. <laughs> he had it. Jumping at it. Almost had it. Had it. McCarran. Big rattle. Big rebound. Manuel Malou. Like some big minutes. Oh, stay ready for the opportunity. Hey, Malou. He's done that. Knocked down a three. Get on the offensive glass. And I'm with you, Corey. Robert Franks is up to 13 points. I'm going to isolate Daniel Johnson on him down the other end. See if he can't get his fourth foul. So smart and crafty and drawing fouls is Daniel Johnson. That'll be a, that'll be a big effect on this game. And here they go, trying to feed him. Good effort from Robert Franks to make it hard to catch. So here he is, Daniel Johnson with Franks. Likes his chances. Put out turning baseline. Fade away two. Juan Ching Lu the rebound. Well, That's been a real good one-on-one -on -one defense. But I'm doubling that because I need to keep him from off his fourth foul. Potentially getting his fourth foul. Three second shot clock, game clock differential. Toward the end of this third, Lamar Patterson wants to make it his moment. Takes it himself. Shows us his class. Still a chance for the 36ers from long range. Dufel Meyer. Oh, 
for Latrobe Financial. Sharp shot from half court. She had a crack at it. 57-61 with a quarter to play. Great to have Lifesavers on board. They've launched a new range of fruit tingles chocolate balls. And we had a heap of them in the studio, but they've taken them from the studio and from us to give them to the kids. And fair enough, kids have absolutely loved them as we have. Hope you're loving this game as much as we're loving this game as well. 57-61 with a quarter to play. Who's going to take home the chocolates in this one? I think Lamar Patterson goes crazy in this fourth quarter to bring it home. Adelaide by four. Kadee doesn't put up a lot of shots. One rims out, McCarran. It's a massive 10 minutes for both teams. 36 is coming off the big COVID break, but last game, beating Melbourne United, ending their eight-game winning streak, and Brisbane Bullets just trying to end the skid, especially at home. The yeah, Bullets have lost their past four games in a row, including their last three here. They are desperate for a win. But so to the 36ers to stay in touch with the top four. Kadeem. Crowd still up and about. Patterson, single figure shot clock, puts it up from long range. Well, stats don't lie often. It's not about Lamar Patterson's stat, but all seven losses this year for the Brisbane Bullets, they've had 15 or more turnovers. They've got 15 now, so they're going to have to change something. Derek Rucker. Just a report on Dang Dang. He's still working on his left shoulder. He looks so he looked very sore, but he's available to play, and I think they're really going to need him down the stretch. We've got to tough it up and give some minutes down here. The Bulls have really tightened up the defense. It's just going to be a matter of where they can, whether or not they can clear the glass. They only gave up three offensive rebounds that quarter. Big improvement. From the corner. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Inspiring. This is stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Matty Malou, he's having himself a little impact here. Just quietly telling CJ Bruton, I'm ready whenever you need. Give me a couple of minutes. Eight, Eight big points, points in six minutes. And missed a shot. Minimal minutes, maximum impact is... Oh, Soto called for that. 57-64. Bullets have led a few times in this game, but 36ers led a quarter time by four, half time by two, three quarter time by four, and they stretched it. Up the middle. 
CJ Brute knowing exactly the scout he's calling the play of what they're running, telling everybody how to stay locked in. As soon as the ball got to Anthony Drimmick saying, watch Jason Kadi through the gate. The gate being two screens around the Latrobe sign, the free throw line. That if Jason Kadi would normally go through the middle, they shut the screens like a gate and he might have an open three ball. Well done, CJ Bruton. Turnover number 16. Good hustle by Drimmick to get it back. Really worked hard there. Through it off Malou. So bullets ball. No, you're off. Adelaide 36 is it's always hard to know what you're going to get. They can be a giant killer on their night. They've beaten both Melbourne United and the Wildcats. They can beat anybody, but they can lose to anybody. Eight minutes. Bullets home game in Brisbane. Can the home team come from behind? Franks filled it up from long range a couple of times in the third. Steps it back out. Besto making it tough. Two on the shot clock. Off the glass. Didn't get the rattle. This is great defense by Bearstow. Making it tough for him. McCarran. Bearstow. the shot clock down and he couldn't fill it. The box up by Jack Sol. Franks from the long range. Got a little cold. He really has and he can get that shot any time. That's so deep. Oh, can they get through a couple of sets? Make the defense have to move and then if that shot's there, as you said, Robert Franks would just step into it. Derek, your thoughts? Well, James Duncan addressed that very thing in the last huddle. He's like, guys, after we get stops, take a breath, meaning be patient on the other end. Reward yourself with good offense down there, and we'll get buckets and win this game. That was not the shot they wanted right then. Hey, it's James Duncan's holding everybody accountable again and taking Robert Franks off because Ruck is right. It's, you can get that at any point. They're not going to guard you all the way out there. Karen weaving his way around them. Oh, oh my goodness. Manny Malou, the money man. 11 points, 4-4 four, four from the field. 3 of 3 from the land of plenty in 8 minutes. Oh, Adelaide have needed someone. Play to... me, coach. I'm here. I've been needing someone to come in and have an impact. No Dusty Hannes, and we know Dusty Hannes has been inconsistent, but still averaging 14 and a half games. Manny Malou. Manny ain't playing, man. Camping in the corner. Coach... I'm ready when you are. They're nothing but net. Ten points to margin, 67 to 57. Seven minutes left. Just starting to slip away. Plenty of time, but they need a hero in a hurry. Well, they do. Yeah, it's they're really a game that Brisbane just cannot afford to lose. I know they're on the skid and keep losing at home. I know there's no Nathan Sobey, but this should be a very winnable game. They should be thinking, Adelaide's coming in off a COVID break. We have no excuses but to get this job done. And right now, they find themselves with a tough task down double figures with seven minutes to go. Someone's going to get a hand on Manny Malou. No Dusty Hannes, no Mojave King, no Isaac Humphreys for the 36ers. No Nathan Sobey for the Bullets. Illawarra in Cairns, followed by Melbourne United and the Perth Wildcats. Huge news for the Perth Wildcats in the last 24 hours that they will be able to go home and play a long list of home games. It'll be coming their way. Derek Rucker downstairs. And Dwayne, as we restart the game here, uh-oh, loose ball. Bullets come up with a big steal. Call it, Derek. Isaiah Moss, here's your Instagram moment. <laughs> Good defense. Brisbane Brisbane. come out pressing. They've got Adelaide a little bit rattled here, guys. Well, it's about time. Just showing, showing something different out there because, as we said, this is a game. There's another turnover from the Adelaide 36ers. So, back-to-back -back 
stops now for the Bullets. And hit the turn. And Isaiah Moss, that's the easiest two points he'll have in the NBL. And just based on that, Isaiah Moss has got a little bit of something left to show us out of the break. Comes with ease. And this is a game, the Bullets have to win this game. They have to stop the skid at home. They've got to get on the winner's list. Out there, 36 is no Dusty Hatters. They just cannot afford to drop this game. Lamar takes it in. That would have been big. They were down by 10. A little bit of a momentum swing. But 36 is connected here with a bucket. Bairstow. Manny Malou stripped. Ding, ding. Back out there. Draws the foul. Gets the two. Crowd up out of their seats. And it's starting on the defensive end. They're getting stops, pressure, creating turnovers and missed shots. And they're getting an opportunity to run out and make plays in the open court. And this is going to be a challenge, I would say, from CJ Bruton to and one leg. So you're really only going to save yourself one point and you're foul on Mitch McCarron, which would have been his fourth. Mitch McCarron was adamant. He was adamant about it. He was saying there's Mitch McCarron knew straight away. He's like, I didn't have anything to do with that. So he's going to challenge this and... When it comes down to the run the Brisbane Bullets are on, it could be a bit of a momentum halt. Try and swing it back 36 is way. That's why you have to trust your leaders. He's the captain of the club. It's not going to be... It's not going to be a lot, in it, is there? Anything that just shows him absolutely whack the arm of Dengue. The way Dengue has, the way he takes off the ball, he's on the right hand side of his body before he comes to the left, and then Mitch McCarron is past him. Oh, might be a graze on the elbow, that's probably that's what they're trying to look for. But I'm one on one for the night, so I know, so I'm staying out of it. I want Corey and Derek to weigh in. It's hard on that replay to be definitive that there was no contact. Well, that's it. They're looking at that, the backboard cam and probably trying to slide down just to see, did he, did he slap and get a bit of the elbow? It's very hard to see. He slapped the fan. The thing is, when you're looking at all the footage, I'm not sure how they go with, can you, you can't have a turn. Well, the referee unless, may very well have heard the, a slap, may yeah. have heard that sound as well. So that's going to be when you try and break it down from frame by frame. See if there's the contact on the elbow. That's what Karen said straight away. I, his reaction really showed that he didn't have a whole lot to do with it. I think Deng Deng was kind of surprised that the call was there, but we've seen other things. Coach's challenge is successful. The ball is overturned. The basket counts. So it's white ball on the baseline. Our white keep their time out and Christian. It looks like that was probably the way it was going to head. It's, it's not... There's not a whole lot that shows massive contact and frame by frame. And as you said, the referee may very well have heard a potential slap from somewhere. More important, he does not get his fourth foul. That's exactly right. You save a point and Mitch McCarron stays on three fouls. So good challenge from CJ Brute. That's why it's in there. You use the coach's challenge at the right time in the right moment. It'll be crucial. He gets to keep a challenge to feed in McCarron. Looks around, trying to find a friend. Sunday Jetch drives inside, had best though with him waiting. They get the stop. The crowd can feel the momentum shift here in Brisbane. Lamar Patterson, who's been inspiring to Kadeem. Well, he put it up. Patterson from another postcard. Long range, rims out. Five minutes in a pivotal game for both teams. Bears up. McCarron had some room. Bears though, huge rebound. Doesn't complete the deal. What play? What point are they going to bring Robert Franks back into the game? Jason Key is in all sorts Ooh, of trouble wow. right here. Looks out of it. That's. He had knocked to the head because it looked like he was stumbling all over the place. Not a good look at all for Jason Gede. I hope he's all right. If he was stumbling due to a knock in the head, then concussion protocol oh, probably percent didn't, didn't, didn't see what happened. Well, let's have another look at Jason Gede here. 
front of Sunday Dench and oh there you go went straight hit the Sunday and he was dazed so straight away when he dropped down the floor but it was after that was the real worry so he must have got a flush from the temple it looks like and then right here couldn't get his balance that's a horrible look and I'm glad they just stopped the game what? hang on is that okay shaking it off all right. that's, that's very surprising. The way he reacted to that hit, you would assume that he'd at least come out to get a, some sort of check. He's absolutely fine and he draws the foul. And he's almost got a spring in his step after all that. Might have knocked him into action. Well, it might have, but you just don't see that too often, especially in today's day and age. Any knock to the head and that reaction did at least get looked at. But foul call. Moving on, okay. Harrison turns inside, three to beat, hands it back out. Moss couldn't find the bucket. Johnson poked away by Harrison, picked up by Patterson. He looks ahead. Will he go alone for the alley oop? Oh, the tip was awesome from Moss. It was the rolling stone to the bucket. It's great ball control in the air. Pass wasn't even on point, but he found a way to finish. Two possession game. Best in. They're not dropping for him after they were early. Oh, Johnson, that's a double double for him. 15 points, 11 rebounds, six offensive rebounds for Daniel Johnson. Sunday Ditch. Wow. Oh, net any given Sunday. That's why that, wow. that offensive rebounding by DJ in the 36s paying off huge. Lamar, he steps in. And he draws down here. It's going to count. Wow. Continuation. Good finish. Sunday Ditch back and forth right now. It's all three with some wide open ones beforehand. Here's that alley oop. Sam Moss did very well to crest that in. And here you go. That's the toughest one he's going to have all night. Patterson, 26 points. 26 minutes of action. One minus seven One of the big stars of the competition, Lamar Patterson. 44 NBA games in Atlanta. All NBL first team, 2019, 2020. 70 plays 65. Patterson's got 26 points. Bearstone, the up fake. Withers back out. McCarran, look left, look right. It's got Sunday again. Not this time. And Franks, huge rebound. Here's Patterson. Sizes it up. Hands it up to Franks. Turns in, tried the hook. Didn't get the two, but we'll go to the line for two. Big fella running the floor. Good recognition by Lamar Patterson. Finding him inside, and he goes up aggressive to finish. On the comeback, Derek? Certainly are, but Adelaide are a really good defensive team, guys. They've got length, and interior defense is really strong because they're tall. DJ is, I mean, Bearstow and DJ, they're similar height. And then they've got Kai Soto in there, and then they really crowd the ball with their athleticism out on the perimeter. I'm really seeing a lot from this Adelaide team that I like on the defensive end. That was a really good defensive possession by the Bullets. They get that because they not the other 36ers aren't set defensively off the turn, uh, off the missed shot. And with this trying to back down Kadee, everybody was helping each other out. And then they dance tried to hit another tough three ball. Didn't get it. Got ourselves a three-point game. Johnson. Three points, three minutes. That's the equation. Back to DJ. Big stars under the Friday Night Lights. McCarron, one of them. He's lost it. Chance to tie it up here, the Bullets. Crowd roaring. Kadee. Madison. A hand it to their main man. Steps it in and draws the foul on Withers. 
make some things happen once again. Mark Patterson, 26 points. It's his time. It is. Got six it, well, it's technically, it's been his time the whole game. <laughs> but it's definitely his time right now to create for himself as well as others. The turnover. Defense stuff. The turnover issues have really started to go. Oh, I love the Adelaide 36 is 17 turnovers. Both teams have 17. You're right. This is CJ Bruton come up with now. We've got to value the ball, right? So make strong lead. They got a chance. They can poke and reach. They got, they got three fouls to go and get. Be strong with the ball. Make sure you make a move deliberate. You've got to get off, make good leads to get. I think we're going to play at it. We bring it down. And you bring CJ there, so you can hear the crowd going to make this tough, they can draw their team home, again, 36ers are coming off their best win of the season against Melbourne United in overtime, but they've had a long rest since that win, they missed all of round 10 with COVID, there is Chris Lynn, the sending the tweet, hey guys, why aren't you here, this is going down to the wire. Big teammates. It's going to be an exciting finish. CJ Bruden there. I think get some offensive sets. Get some ball movement, player movement. Find out what's the best thing to go to right now. Daniel Johnson, Cam Besto. Mitch McCarran creates something. Sunday Detch has got going a little bit. But on the other end, someone has to put their hands up and say, I'm going to have to lock, try and lock up Lamar Patterson because no one's done it so far. And right now, the the easiest option of how hard it will be to try and stop him is try not to let him catch the ball. Full denial, do not let Lamar Patterson catch the ball because he's just so crafty. He can get by anyone, so well balanced. Do your work early, make someone else have to try and make a play. Who wasn't in yet either Does that with that anymore, foul. Or that doesn't matter anymore? I'm asking you a question. You know, ask me a question. <laughs> if, if the ball's not in and it's a foul, what's that? Under two minutes on sports and one. Yeah. Or that not? Good answer, Rep. Uh, yep. Nicely explained, calmly explained. And I hope you heard that at home. Besto in the meantime, the Sunday ditch. Feeds it in. Besto off the glass. Didn't work. Missed a couple from close range now. And Brisbane has put together several stops. Twice in this game, the Bullets have been down by 10. There you go, CJ Brin was yelling for Todd Willis to deny it. Do not let Lamar Patterson catch the ball. Make someone else have to make a play, and they do. Ding, ding, under the bucket, gets the two, and they're back in front, the Bullets. This is new territory. Oh, the turnover. Patterson, I've been wanting to see all year. 30 points in 28 minutes, 10 of 18. Brisbane Bullets stringing together consecutive stops. As a result, turnovers and points, and they now have the lead. This is Aaron. That's a hospital bus. That's that's not a good thing. You just throw it up there. Daniel Johnson really wasn't aware of it. Mark Patterson saw it coming from a mile away. So look at that. That is hanging in the air for so long. Mark Patterson, and then he gets jiggy with it. You know he still had that. They're on a bit of a run here. No surprise it's been the turnovers in this fourth quarter. The Adelaide 36ers, they've been piling up in succession and at crucial moments. He's having himself a good time. Why wouldn't he? This is rare territory for both teams. That Brisbane Bullets, their lowest winning scores this year, 96, 96, 97, and 100. So they're at 73 right now, and Adelaide hasn't won scoring less than 83. So a grind-out game is rare for both of these teams. I mean, the defense have stepped up by Brisbane. This is why they have been in practice all week, working their behinds off on defense. And in this fourth quarter, it has shown is it enough to get the win? Will Lamar Patterson break the stack? When he leads, they lose. 
from 10 down to 3 up the Bullets. Over to you, Adelaide. What have you got left? Mitch McCarran wants to make amends. Trimming for company. Hands it to Withers. He in turn to Bairstow. And he starts to line it up again. Sunday Detch for the shot clock. And Jadee puts his hand up and says, yes, that was on me. They give that one away. They just out of position in the end. Good defense, good energy. James Duncan leading the charge. Trying to rev up. Man in blue. Just lock in one stop here and you're really in the driver's seat. Trying to make it tough for the 36ers. Bairstow, Johnson, Detch gets the screen. Will he put it up? Frank's in his grill. Step back three. It rattled halfway down and then rattled back out. Wow. They've had three of those this quarter. Cam Bairstow's layup just before. Sunday Detch, that whole possession looked like they really wanted a three ball. Plenty of time left in the game to get a quick two. Going inside. Give it to the big fella. He got to work right now. Frank's. Goes to work, fade away too. Doesn't go. Bairstow rips it down. To McCarran. Will he put it up? He owes the one. He'll take an assist though. Hands it to Johnson. To Bairstow. Who turns, shoots, and misses. It's about six consecutive stops. And it's been bunnies. They've missed so many bunnies in this fourth quarter. What are you talking about when you're not used to trying to grind out a win? Come up short on a few of those. And Lamar Patterson can spill more blood. Tough fade away two. Lamar, he's clocked up 32. And the meter's still running. 16 seconds left. Emmanuel Malou. And Emmanuel Malou have been the stars to keep Adelaide in it. He is still... Hasn't missed a shot. Sunday ditch. Sunday ditch. My bad. That's a big knockdown. And again, they hit the tough ones. Oh my goodness, this game has gone another level. Well, this man, this match. Man on a mission. Refuse to lose. Step back. Bucket. So pretty to watch when he's in this type of form. Tough shot. Good contest. Better finish. Ready to play. Remember, we talked about. Then it was top three MVP voting a couple of seasons ago. He was a closer. He wanted the ball in his hands to make a play. Wanted to hit the big shot. That's what Lamar Patterson has shown he can do. Just so good to see him out there. In his ways. Four of eight from three. 32 points. Got six assists. Got five steals as well. He's been acting on the defensive end. Right now, put the ball into a good free throw shooter's hands. Try and seal the win. Get the ball back to Lamar Patterson. Well, Adelaide, a steal and a three, and they win it on the bus. So they'd be thinking positive first for the steal, and then the foul, 13 seconds left. Lamar Patterson, the big star under the Friday night lights. The crowd has absolutely loved the show that he's brought tonight. 75-73. Brisbane lead by two, about to inbound it. 36ers need to get it back. Patterson can't pass it to himself, to Kadeem. They don't get the steal and the seconds wind down, and they send Krebs to the line. He may just want to hold on to that, but another guy, Lamar Patterson, inbounding the ball. Now, Adelaide are going to try and foul straight away. It's not like they're going to let some time run off the clock, so it's not like you can throw it back to Lamar Patterson. They're going to try and pressure him. Whoever gets the ball, they were going to foul. You can see Mitch McCarran chasing today. Surprise, you let Lamar inbound the ball. And here we go, Tanner Krebs. Big free throws here. Take time, Take your time, take a breath. The instructions. I lead by two. Okay, two, hold. Oh. Oh. He, he didn't make a play on the ball. That's your rules. Rattles in. That was massive. They lead by three. But how big is this one? He has a smile. Crowd know it. Big 
free throws by Tanner Krebs. Both look like they could have fallen out. <laughs> Big free throws there. There's tonight. It's all been about this man, Corey. Oh, man. I asked for it. I asked for it, and he delivered. Lamar Patterson has been impressive from the first shot of the game. Losing four straight does something to you individually and collectively. He came out today on a mission with refusal to lose. It's been impressive. Great to see him in his type of form. This is the Lamar Patterson we all fell in love with the first two years he played here. This right here, what we're seeing, is first-team All-NBL Lamar Patterson. Great performance tonight. Will it be enough to win? Well, they're in the driver's seat. Right they're now. in the driver's seat, but it ain't over until it's over. Well, yeah, one stop here. Seal the game. Will that stack this season? Be broken. Be broken. And the stat I'm talking about, people, is when Lamar Patterson leads, they lose. Leads in scoring. In they scoring. Lose. You're right, man. Look at those sixes. Had so many chances. I'm going to go back and look at just the easy ones that missed. I don't need to hope the wide open ones. 18 turnovers, man. So, yeah, 100%. That and the fourth quarter combined with those easy misses. And I would have thought maybe he'd throw not even out there. He's three of three. Cook three. It. So don't foul a three-point shooter here. Sunday Ditch. No one goes near him. Wins out. Now Patterson, their hero, on cue, pulls down the rebound. Vintage Patterson and Brisbane season is back alive. They had to win this game. We highlighted off the top. They had to stop losing at home. Try and turn the tables, though, Nathan Sobey. And just a massive win. Lamar Patterson willed them across the line. Someone else chipped in, did their bit defensively. When they turned up the pressure, they turned up the energy. They look really good. Big win from the Bullets. No doubt about it. This one will feel good. Seventy-seven, seventy-three. the final score line. And the crowd, they enjoyed tonight. They'll be back. The LA 36 is just, think about some missed opportunities. They, they did not hit a two-point field goal in the fourth quarter. There's our full-off player of the game. Who else? Lamar Patterson, 32, 4, and 6. And as you said, Corey, that is the stat line of a man who used to be an All-NBL. And he is outstanding. But Adelaide, those missed, did not hit a two. They were 0 of 7 from two-point range, 4 of 7 from three. So... Combine that with the turnovers, those little missed ones from Cam Besto here and there. Yeah, they look back at some missed opportunities because they played well, just couldn't get it done. Brilliant game, brilliant win. Hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. We'll be back to wrap it up straight after the break.
the four losses in the three home game losses in a row. Might win the Hungry Jacks highlights, and there's plenty of Lamar Patterson in. Well, there is. He was outstanding, but he had plenty of guys chip in. Robert Franks finally got going in the second half. They needed him too. Drew Mick and Isaiah Moss stepped up for a little bit, and Jason Kennedy didn't score, but had nine assists on the night, so he was getting people involved and just made big plays at the right time. And no surprise. The question was, can they play defense at a high level? And when the game was there to be taken over and won, they ramped it up on the defensive end. They got deflections. They got.